Oops. <laughs> Remember Crayola crayons? <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd play with them. I mean, I think of them as really low pigment and poor quality and so forth, but what if you just took some out and played with them? Hmm. See, the orange is pretty good. The pink is a little... Yeah. Um, let's try a different pink. What is this? Melon. Ooh. All right. How about uh, oil pastels? These are Pro Art Jumbo Pastels. And they make kind of a eh, not very definitive line. So I thought I'd uh, use the Crayolas to sort of smear the oil pastel and get a little better density there. something in my Crayola box. Similar. This is called Dandelion. At least the names are interesting. I'm getting some pretty interesting stuff here just with these crayons. And so far I'm using really cheap materials. So let's try something different. Um, I've got these Neo Pastel from Caran d'Ache. These are Artist Oil Pastel. Ooh, they're a little richer in color. Ooh, a little more expensive. And then another product, the Caran d'Ache uh, Neo Color 2, the water soluble crayons. I use these a lot. These are nicely pigmented and they're a little more compatible with acrylic than the oil pastels. You can smear them with a little water. Sort of diffuse the line. Let's try a different color palette. I'm just going to go with this uh, green here. I'm trying to make sort of different kinds of lines. Let's see what happens. This is the cheap oil pastel. Hmm. This is the Caran d'Ache oil pastel. One of my favorite oil pastels is the Sennelier, which is kind of pricey, but Boy, they're creamy and gorgeous and densely pigmented. Now, I am working on cheap drawing paper, so the paper is going to affect how the material looks as well. Let's see, I have some, some of this green palette in the water soluble crayons. This is a Holbein oil pastel. They're square, they're really richly pigmented, and um, they're a little harder than uh, in consistency than the Sennelier. So these are kind of buttery, like lipstick. These are a little harder. So I was thinking I might use some of these um, pieces of paper that I've used to lift paint, the kind of uh, the scrap paper where I offload excess paint and lift paint because I'm working on other pieces. 
or maybe I just draw circles and abandon them. Uh, ooh. So I thought I might use some of these as sort of a base coat for some crayon work. So let's just um, see what happens. That's the water soluble crayon. Here's the Crayola coming right up. And just for fun, I mean, why else would you do anything? I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to try water. I mean, part of the fun of crayons is that you're not using wet media, but can't seem to stay away from it. So that kind of disperses the water-soluble crayon, but not the Crayola. I like the idea of just layering lines and scribbles. When you draw one color over another, whoops, Ooh, yeah, that one works. Yeah, it's it's going over the green pretty well. Okay. So here's something else I was just trying. I'm putting a little quinacridone gold, which is a transparent color, on the paper, and then scraping it, and uh, the crayon marks seem to really show up nicely. Try a little of this manganese blue. It does seem like the, the better quality oil pastels really work a lot better in the um, sort of mixing media context. These have just really good coverage and they go on very smoothly.